Welcome to the power of faith and the ministry of David Hathaway. Please join David as he ministers today's word. Even though I walk through the valley of death, I will not, no, I will not be afraid. been praying a long time without result for a sick believing relative raised this question in one of my meetings. Sometimes I'm strong, but sometimes I doubt, even though I don't want to, and I'm afraid I'm losing my faith for this healing. I believe, but in practice it's hard. How can one deal with this? I have to admit that in my own ministry I have to face similar problems, not necessarily in healing, but in some other area where I need more faith. Every new year, I like to take a few days away from the ministry to be alone with the Lord and to spend time in serious prayer. In one of these times, I was praying over this very issue, how to receive a stronger gift of faith, how to receive something by faith which is absolutely impossible to the human mind. I believe that there's a big difference between healing for the believer in the church and healing for the unbelievers. As an evangelist with the unbeliever, you get one shot. Often they are only there one time, not only to hear the gospel, but to hear about Christ himself for the first time. Therefore, they need to see and experience something in order to bring them to faith. They're not in the church. And if they don't experience something through the Holy Spirit, which will miraculously make Christ a reality in their lives, they're not going to be in the church. So it's important that our contact with that person is complete. But if you're dealing with people who are already in the church, sometimes it is a question of building their faith. I know from the Bible that nothing is impossible. But in order to receive, there must be a building process, a growing in faith, not giving up. This is when you must fast and pray and believe that God will do it. To receive that kind of faith, which will work a miracle in your own life, you must be totally convinced first that nothing is impossible with your God, then that he wants to work that miracle in you, And finally, that you know when. I was healed from throat cancer more than 40 years ago. But I was sick for three months before I came to the spiritual 
with God where the miracle happened. Three months in spiritual growth, followed by a sudden revelation, an explosion, and in that moment, the healing was instantaneous. When I was in a communist prison 30 years ago for Bible smuggling, I was almost one year in the prison, believing that God would work the miracle to get me out. But that year was the best year of my life. Yes, I was separated from my wife and children. My youngest daughter was only three years old. But I grew all the time in my experience with God. It was a testing of my faith. But when God did it, it was sudden, a big miracle. I traveled the world for two years afterwards talking about that miracle. I preached to more than a million people, sometimes 10,000 at a time. And a quarter of a million came to Christ because of that testimony. But the miracle took one year of prayer. I'm a coward. And from the very first day, I cried, oh, God, get me out. In the early days, I thought that they would torture me, then simply throw me out of the country. But God didn't get me out. However, if he had answered my first prayers and released me from the prison within one or two days, what would have happened? Suppose God had organized things extremely well and got me out of that prison really quickly. I wouldn't be evangelizing in Russia the way I do now. I wouldn't have this ministry I have today. The longer I stayed in the prison, the bigger the miracle became. In the end, it was the British Prime Minister, Harold Wilson, who came to Czechoslovakia just to get me out. I wasn't thrown out of the back door. I was released in a blaze of publicity. That's God. But the whole miracle took one year to prepare. I didn't let go of God, even in the darkest days of despair. I knew, I believed, but it hurt and it was hard. If only you could know how bad those days I spent in the prison were. It's the same with you. Hold on. Don't let go of God. God will do it. If it takes three months, three years, God will do it. And if you doubt, don't feel that God will abandon you because of this. Let me encourage you. About three weeks before I was released from the prison, and God had told me the exact day I would get out of the prison, all the pressure in there got so much I had a heart attack. They took me to the prison hospital, gave me an ECG. They had no medicine, so they just sent me back to my cell. And I cried out, oh God, why have I had a heart attack? I'm not believing. If I had really believed that I was coming out in three weeks, I wouldn't be having a heart attack. I'd be dancing for joy. Oh God, I've let go of my faith. Oh God, forgive me. And God did. And three weeks later, the miracle happened. I came out. God understands we're human. Only God is divine. We're going to fail sometimes. Even I fail God. I'm not a holy man, but I do trust God and I love God. God looks on your heart. Look at the times when even Peter failed Jesus. Isn't that true? If you're believing for healing for yourself or others, healing is part of the atonement of Christ. Matthew 8, 16 and 17 says that Jesus healed all who were sick in order that the words of the prophet Isaiah would be fulfilled. In chapter 53, verse 4, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. We don't live in a perfect world, but in a sinful one. Let me ask this question. Is every single believer living without any sin? Let's be truthful. We do fail, God. Even Paul said, the good things I would do, I don't. And the bad things I don't want to do, I do. Yes, there is forgiveness. 
through the blood of Christ. That's why John said to the believers, I write unto you that you sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. 1 John 2 verse 1. It's the same with healing. Yes, we should be without sin, but the fact is the devil is in the world and we're tempted and tested every day. It's the same with healing. We accept that colds and flu are infectious, that accidents happen to all of us. We suffer cuts and bruises, headaches, toothache, and sometimes broken limbs. When our children suffer from mysterious symptoms, we consult the doctor. But with healing, God can do it. God wants to do it. But healing doesn't always happen. Sometimes the devil gets in the way. Sometimes it's a question of our choice. Sometimes a question of even our understanding of what God wants to do in our lives. Have you ever had a financial problem? God wants to either prevent us getting into the problem in the first place or deliver us out of it. But does this always happen or do we sometimes suffer? Yes, all these things will be resolved. They will happen when Christ returns. That's the final victory and the devil will have to sit in my old prison. Then everything will be perfect. No more death, no more tears. Calvary was our D-Day when Christ made the victory possible. But the day, final victory, is when Christ returns to earth and at the moment we're living in the battle between those two. Miracles don't come easily. You might think I talk about miracles as though they grow on trees. They don't. When I had the cancer in my throat and when I was in prison, God said the same thing to me. Do you want to go the easy way or the hard way? I'm a coward, so I said, tell me the easy way. With the cancer, God said the easy way is to have the operation. You'll use your voice. The cancer was on my vocal cord. But you can learn to speak using your stomach muscles and you won't die. I'll be with you. Then I said, if that's the easy way, tell me the hard way. I chose the hard way because when I said, what happens if I choose the hard way? He said, I'll work a miracle. Exactly the same thing happened in the prison. I said, oh God, get me out of this hell. Do you want the easy way or the hard way? Tell me the easy way. All right, you stay in prison 10 years. I'll never leave you. They won't kill you or starve you to death. <laughs> now then, tell me the hard way. Tell me the difference. God said to me, the hard way will bring a powerful miracle. I chose the hard way and the miracle. Miracles don't come easy. While driving to a preaching engagement, some of my staff were with me in the car and we were praying. I said to God, I'm tired of talking about the miracle of my cancer and the miracle of my release from prison. I want a new miracle, a bigger one now. Then I realized what I'd said. And my staff remember, I cried out to God, oh God, hold me by the hand while I go through the suffering that will bring the miracle. Do you understand? Miracles do not come easy. When in my most recent miracle, I'd gone to the hospital with suspected lung cancer, one of my daughters who is a nurse and was with me at the time said, Dad, don't be afraid when they diagnose the cancer. Unless they prove that you have it, you will have no evidence of a miracle when God heals you. Thank you for listening to The Power of Faith, broadcast with David Hathaway. 
We would love to hear from you. Contact us by visiting www.eurovision.org.uk. Also available online are a large assortment of videos, magazines and books for your growth in God. We would like to give all new subscribers to David's ministry a free gift. To receive your free gift, visit www.eurovisiontv.org. Remember, those who know their God will be strong and do exploits. Worship used by kind permission of Vine Song, www.vinesong.com.